Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's just do another random entry here. This time yet again focusing on one of the lesser known mafioso gangsters out there. This one residing there in the Chicago area. In fact, when I was reading all the information associated with this mafioso guy, you could tell he was through and through 100% right down to the bone a lifelong gangster. Like this was some one that if you looked up gangster in the dictionary and it told you to see a picture that's what you would see here with regards to this guy I mean pretty much from a young age all the way till he died he was absolutely within the world of the mafia and doing pretty much every known activity associated with it in fact again you're looking at a picture of him now his full name was William Dadano Sr. as always though they go by monikers and in this case he was known as William Russo so, and another case he was known as Willie Potatoes. That's right, Willie Potatoes. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the rich information associated with this very, very through and through lifelong gangster. So who was this William Tadano Sr., again, also known as Willie Potatoes? Well, he was someone that was born on December 28th, 1912, and ultimately he ended up growing up and living, born there in Chicago, Illinois, and by all accounts, simply staying there within that area throughout his entire life. I mean, he may have moved to other parts of the United States or maybe other cities here and there, but Based on what I was reading, you could absolutely tell that he was um, on all his activities and all the stuff associated with the mafia there in Chicago. In fact, at an early age, at age 24, he was already involved with a gang that was known as the 42 Gang. Apparently, this was a local street gang that was located on the Chicago's west side, specifically from an area known as Maxwell Street. So those of you that are there in Chicago and you know about these areas that I'm talking about now, now, how about that? Next time you go through and let's say you're walking through those locations, remember that at one point, there was this guy, William the Daniel Sr. or Willie Potatoes, right there within that same area too. But yes, he was involved within that gang. He had already accumulated a very, very extensive criminal record. Get this, by that age, he already had nine counts of bank robbery and then also multiple counts of larceny and then multiple counts of auto theft. And we're talking about the stuff that was actually filed on record. All the other stuff that remains unloaded because who knows how many other crimes he could have committed uh, basically you know never added up to that total because it was never reported afterward but yes him uh, being there in that area eventually he became involved within the mafia apparently he was working with someone a guy by the name of Giancani and another guy by the name of Battaglia Sam Giancani to be specific and then Sam Teets Battaglia they recruited this guy Willie Potatoes into the Chicago outfit, the infamous Chicago outfit, the big one there essentially within the mafia world. And so when that started, that 1944 to be specifically, he was there already just doing all these things associated with the mafia. In fact, the FBI never really knew him, in this case Willie Potatoes, having any other type of legitimate employment or maybe even legitimate business. More on that here in a minute because interestingly enough, he did have a little small side business of sorts and I'll explain that again a little bit later but yes once he was involved within that world especially after World War II he became an infamous enforcer of that outfit, a leading enforcer, if you call it that. There he was controlling so many operations, including illegal gambling, and then also he was involved with uh, uh, loan sharking, and then he was also involved with robberies within that location as well, and then he was also involved on the darker side with enforcing a punishment. So in some cases he was there, in fact he was known to be a ruthless and pitiless killer with regards to specifically favoring ice pick blow torches and then keeping victims alive for at least several hours while he was torturing them so this was a guy that again could do 
all those things that the mafia are normally known for, let's say on the quote unquote lighter side, but on the darker side, he was someone that was through and through absolutely involved within it. In fact, he's been compared to someone that I've talked to in the past within one of my videos, Sam, Mad Sam Stefano, who I'll include the link for below if you haven't had a chance to see that video, but they too have been compared when it comes to their techniques and what they did. This guy, essentially, this Willie Potatoes, was also involved with that type of savage activity. And so that goes to show again how far he would go with regards to it. But other things that this guy did was he was also involved with trying to steal war ration stamps during World War II. Three million, in fact, when it came to that. And interestingly enough, he was caught. They suspected that the Chicago outfit, the police, in other words, suspected that Shoaib was behind it. And so whenever they cornered him, I don't know if they necessarily captured him or they necessarily just corralled him. Either way, though, they were asking him questions, but he absolutely refused to name anyone associated with the outfit with that crime. So again, it goes to show that this was a guy that was through and through a mafioso gangster because he was not going to rat out on anyone. And then as far as other operations, illegal operations within the Chicago area, some of you again that live in these locations might know exactly what I'm talking about, but he was someone that was able to control areas within DuPage and then Will and then Kane counties and then also several suburbs in Chicago known as Cicero and then also Berwyn. So interestingly enough, those of you that are within those locations, once again, you'll be there knowing that you'll be there in an area that this guy, Willie Potatoes, used to operate in. What was interesting, too, was that he was also someone very, very familiar with every Chicago burglar that was there within the city. This was apparently because the Chicago outfit would allow these burglars to do their thing as long as they got a cut, a street tax, or a tribute, a small percentage of what they stole from whatever businesses they were stealing from, the, bar, the uh, Chicago Alpha would allow it as long as they got that small percentage as a tribute. If they didn't, then I'm pretty sure that they would have this guy... Willie Potatoes uh, come after them and then try to do some bad things to them afterward. But yes, at least within that location, he ended up living with his wife. If you believe that, you know, imagine this guy again being so savage in some cases with the type of tactics that he did to some victims. But he was living in an area known as North Riverside there in Illinois. And he was living there with his wife. And ultimately, he had five children as well. I often wonder when it comes to these people that are within the world and the mob mafia and do these type of very, very violent acts if their children ever really know what happened or even then if their wife ever did as far as knowing the nightly activities and everything they did. I imagine that the spouses had some ideas, uh, but I imagine that the children probably would and there would have been a pretty easy set of ways to make sure that the children involved would not be aware of what's going on with the true operations of their dad or whoever was involved within the world of the mafia. But yes, that was this guy with regards to his actual um, activities, uh, someone that was again involved in so many of these illegitimate activities and being able to successfully do so without being captured or without even going to jail on most occasions. What ended up actually going, getting him to prison was this this. First off, he came very, very close to going to prison because he was being in, uh, involved in a hijacking of silver bullion, about a million dollars back in 1966. Can you imagine that? In 1966, what that would come out to today, that would have been a very, very large amount of stolen goods, and who knows how much that would have led in terms to a jail time. But actually, he was acquitted, so everything was good with regards to that for him. But as it turns out afterward, shortly after that, that's when he went to prison for another bank robbery, but this time he actually got caught. Apparently, he was arrested for conspiracy to rob a bank that was known as the Franklin Park Bank, and this was something that he was planning for at least six years. Who knows how much he was trying to steal with regards to that time, uh, but but in any case, he was caught, or at least he was caught before the action was even done. And then get this, for that activity, he was actually sentenced to 15 years in prison. When I was reading that information, it made me think that with FBI and the police and law enforcement 
and then also those involving judges and others that were in all those cases beforehand, they were probably frustrated by how many times they just couldn't get this guy, Willie Potatoes, behind some kind of bars for a long time period. You got to have that evidence. You got to have that strong evidence, in other words, to do so. So I imagine that when this simple bank robbery was done, or not done, at least in time, in other words, he was caught beforehand, I imagine that that Everything that was the accumulation of that frustration was sentenced there at those 15 years. Like, in other words, he was given the maximum sentence and then some to make up for everything that was a lost cause from all that time before. Because 15 years for a conspiracy to rob a bank, uh, probably a robbery that never even occurred because it was caught in time, that's pretty, that's a long time period. On top of that, he was sentenced to a federal penitentiary that was considered a supermax prison at the time. Again, another reason as to why he was sentenced to the max and then also sentenced to that very, very super prison because of the frustration from before. But yes, he was sentenced there. And then while in prison, he ended up dying of natural causes. So pretty much throughout his entire life again, as I mentioned earlier, there he was at a young age being involved within criminal records and being involved with criminal activity with that 42 gang and then being initiated and being led into the outfit. He also became a made man and then a capo within the outfit. And then he was absolutely someone that was just enjoying all these activities, both on the lighter side. And again, I use it on quotation with more of the more commonly known type of activities involving illegal gambling and robberies and so on. And then the darker, much darker vers version of things involving torture and then victims and then killing people as well. But yes, ultimately, all the way until his old age, that that's when he ended up going to prison finally for that bank robbery and then dying within prison in of itself. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with this uh, this lesser known gangster, William Dadano Sr., a.k.a. William Russo, a.k.a. Willie Potatoes. Again, someone that... You, it looks almost nonchalant, but he was absolutely serious business when it came to the world of the mafia. But again, if anyone has any more information, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. And I was teasing earlier about him potentially having a business, a real business, a legitimate one. In other words, that he dealt with. Get this. Apparently, he did have a garbage collection company that he formed that operated in many parts there of Chicago. It was known as the West Suburban Scavenger Service. I was wondering if he set this up because eventually anyone in law enforcement or FBI, they want to make sure that, yes, someone who is living, let's say, in a household, they have a wife, they have five children, presumably with goods and services and all that, if they're not working in any regular job, nor are they out owning their own type of business, how are they doing this? Like, how are they affording all of that, especially if there's no other form of activity tied to it? Like, I don't know, being a, a someone that's inherited money or someone that has trust money or something like that. And so I imagine that he set something like this up. This guy, Willie Potato, set up this type of business to make sure that, yes, he could at least have some legitimate income coming in and have that question off his back. Because uh, what was it, Al Capone, right, that had to go to jail because of taxes or illegal uh, taxes that were owed on income that was never counted on. So here he was with an ability to state this is my income and then that's why he was making things more legitimate if you will because that's at least one of the back ideas that I was thinking when I saw that information that's the closest thing though that this guy Willie Potatoes had when it came to a legitimate business but again anyone else had more info about this guy or maybe the areas that I was mentioning earlier if you hear them now maybe if you see any telltale signs left or dedications or anything else as far as uh, this guy Willie Potatoes then let me know all right everybody Thanks again as always. Take care.